So good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Kazakhstan American Corners program. My Kamar Jai, you're on mute. Sorry, okay, good can you repeat evening. that? <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Kazakhstan American Corners program. My name is Kamar Jai. I'm the coordinator of the American Corners oh. tonight, and I'm the host of the meeting. Also, I will be with you along with my colleague from the American Corners. <laughs> serving as a moderator to help answer your questions and respond to your comments during the session and thank you for joining us today's session is dedicated to the black history month we will be here with you for one hour and we really love active participants so please share your thoughts in the chat box or you can also answer your question or ask your questions just click the button raise your hand we will answer it during the session or in the end during the Q&A question and answer sessions. So <laughs> it's such an honor to introduce to you our guest, Caroline Ideas, an English language fellow from Martin, Tennessee. She worked for six years at an intensive English program at a small and rural university. Her academic interests are experiential learning and second language identity. Caroline will talk about uh, racism and reconciliation in Tennessee. So let's go ahead and begin. Now I give the floor to our guest. Hello, Caroline. We're very happy to have you here with us today. Thank you, Kamar Jai. Um, hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Caroline Ideas, and I will be giving a short presentation about uh, racism and reconciliation in West Tennessee. And I see that I have some of my friends from Martin here. So um, I think I have Miss Joyce Washington and I think Harriet is on here too. There might be more, there's many people here. But uh, at the end of this presentation, you can ask questions if you would like. And I, this topic will have some difficult vocabulary, but it is also a sensitive topic. So um, it's very sensitive here in the US. So um, the history is difficult vocabulary wise, but it is also a difficult history for us Americans to, to understand, but it's very real. It definitely happened, but it's, still difficult for us. So I will share my presentation. Okay. And if you do have questions throughout the presentation, you can ask as well. Um, so first of all, um, is my talk, our, today we'll be talking about racism and reconciliation in Tennessee. Uh, my name is Caroline Ideas, and I live in Martin, Tennessee, which is in the northwest corner of Tennessee, right here where the T is. So I'll talk about what we did, what we're doing right now in our community. Okay, and so I live in Weekly County, Tennessee, which is right here in the upper left corner and it's a small community. My town is about 10,000 people. So it's very rural and the county has about 20 to 30,000 residents. So it's a very rural county. 
but we do have a university in our town. The university has about 8,000 students. So some of the vocabulary that um, I will say or you might hear in the videos today are these words. So first is uh, racial terror, which is in, in the US context is violence against non-white people. Lynching, which is to kill someone illegally as a punishment for an alleged crime. And some of the people, many of the people that were lynched were not formally charged with the crime, so there was no evidence. And segregation is a policy of keeping people of different races, religions, etc., separate from each other. Jim Crow laws state and local laws that enforced segregation in the southern U.S. And I am sorry if you don't know the history of the U.S. and that's understandable, but I'm doing my best to keep it concise and straightforward. So the topic today is reconciliation. So the act of, um, this is, the the act of two groups becoming friendly again that is the dictionary definition okay and racial inequality and the advantages and disadvantages that affect different races in the u.s and so this is still in 2021 very much a big issue and disenfranchise is to prevent a person or group from the right to vote. So a little bit of history uh, in the Southern US to get, I'm not a historian. I teach English as a second language as my profession, but I'm interested in history but by no, I am not an expert in this field whatsoever. But in the US had slavery until um, 1865. And then after, this, after slavery was abolished or ended in 1865, there, it wasn't the end of anything. It was just the start of something else. And to fast forward, segregation happened. So where blacks and whites were forced to be separated in everything, such as schools, every, everything you can think of, business, trade, everything was separated. And especially in the Southern US. And you can, this is a well, example of the schools that were forced to desegregate for schools that were segregated. So separate in the red states. So that means the black students had one school and the white students had another school. It was quote called separate, but equal. However, they were not equal. The usually the schools for the white students were nicer. They were had more resources, more money, better books, and so on. Whereas the schools for the black students just were not the same. And so this lasted for a very long time. And there was a famous court case in 1955 that in that desegregated schools. However, it took over a decade for the schools to integrate, meaning come together. So with that history in mind, things were separate in the Southern US, people were separated by, by force 
And so there's a lot of racial tension and the blacks were not treated equally at all. And so I have a short video for us to watch that summarizes the, the lynchings and the racial inequalities. Let me just check, okay. After slavery was prohibited in 1865, formerly enslaved people in America were granted full citizenship, the right to vote, and under the 14th Amendment, protection from racial violence. Formerly enslaved people were promised land and opportunity, but most got nothing because America quickly devolved into an era of racial terrorism and oppression for black citizens. White people in the South were angry that people formerly considered property were now equal citizens. Many turned to violence. In the years immediately following the Civil War, thousands of black people were murdered when they tried to claim their rights. Soon afterwards, federal troops were withdrawn from the South, ending a brief period of racial progress known as Reconstruction. Nationwide resistance to racial equality resulted in the reestablishment of racial subordination through biased laws, disenfranchisement, and terrorism most dramatically enforced through lynchings. Racial terror lynchings of black people defined a shameful era in America. These lynchings differed from the hanging of white people in places where there was no functioning criminal justice system. Racial terror lynchings were directed at all black people. They enforced compliance with racial hierarchy and white supremacy and ensured racial segregation and denial of equal rights. In 1916, in Cedar Bluff, Mississippi, a young black man named Jeff Brown accidentally bumped into a white woman while running to catch a train. A white mob stopped him and lynched him, beating him and then hanging him from a tree for his insolence and carelessness. His public murder was not about criminal punishment, but was instead about maintaining racial hierarchy and terrorizing the black community. White town residents proudly sold photographs of Mr. Brown's brutalized body hanging from the tree for five cents each. The Equal Justice Initiative has documented thousands of racial terror lynchings between 1877 and 1950. EJI has confirmed the lynchings of over 4,000 black people who were tortured, maimed, beaten, shot, hung, and burned alive by crowds of white people often with the cooperation of law enforcement or government officials. The terror of lynching was so widespread that millions of black people fled the South and settled in the urban North and West as refugees of American terror, shaping the current demographic geography of the United States. On July 5, 1933, an older black woman named Elizabeth Lawrence reprimanded a group of white children who threw rocks at her as she walked home from work. Word spread that a black woman had dared to rebuke white children, and that night, an angry mob of white citizens lynched Ms. Lawrence for her audacity. Her home was then burned to the ground. Her son, Alexander, fled to Boston. Racial terror lynchings often had the atmosphere of carnivals, with food vendors and souvenir stands. Hundreds or thousands of white people would often gather to watch and take part in the torture and murder of black citizens. There has been no effort in America to confront this legacy of racial terror. While hundreds of Confederate monuments litter the landscape in southern states, there has been no public recognition of the violence endured by black people. On October 7, 1910, a white mob in Montgomery, Alabama tried to abduct and lynch black men being held in jail on suspicion of miscegenation or interracial sexual relations. When they were unable to get the men out of the jail, the frustrated mob lynched a black taxi driver named John Dell, who was sitting in his cab nearby. No one was ever arrested or prosecuted for his murder. EJI's Community Remembrance Project collects soil from the many sites where terror lynchings occurred. Jars labeled with the names of murdered black citizens are on public display at EJI, a powerful visual reminder of history we must face. EJI is working to create a permanent memorial to honor victims of lynching, a place to reflect on America's history of racial violence. 
we hope to place historical markers at hundreds of lynching sites around the country. Contemporary issues like police violence, excessive punishment in the criminal justice system, and even harsh and punitive treatment of children of color in schools and on streets cannot be understood without a deeper examination into our history of racial violence. More truthful discourse and reflection on our history of racial injustice is essential for us to achieve racial equity. Confronting the legacy of lynching is critical to advancing this conversation. We hope you will join our effort to help towns, cities, and states confront and recover from these tragic histories of racial violence through truth and reconciliation, where there can truly be equal justice for all. Okay, so... Oops, sorry. Um, so as we saw in that video, um, black men and women were lynched for basically no reason that is suitable. One, one was a woman, a black woman reprimanded three white kids for, you know, just being too loud and that was it. And then one person, one man, black man was lynched because he was at the wrong place at the wrong time so this and the, these are all rec recorded these are all true these these happened and the video said there were 4,000 records however the the number of unrecorded lynchings because it did not have to be by a law enforcement it did not have to be documented we have no idea of the actual number, but over 4,000 recorded. And in this map here, you can see um, the orange is uh, the lynchings of black people. So here, and then um, the white people and the different colors, Mexican, American Indian, Chinese, Japanese, and other. Um, each each dot here has their own story as to, I, I use this term loose, why they got lynched. Really, there is no reason why, but each, each dot has their own story. And as we learned in the video, the past is very troubling. And it wasn't that long ago until 1883 to 1941. This is just of these records. They were happening before 1883 um, to 1941, not, not that long ago. So 80 years ago. For some people, that's in their lifetime still. And so in Alabama, which is south of here, south of Tennessee, the two years, three years ago now, the National Memorial for Peace and Justice opened up in Montgomery, Alabama. And it's a memorial for lynching victims that are documented uh, here in the, in the US each. And I'll explain a little more. And so, as I said earlier, I live in Weekly County, Tennessee. So each county in the US that has documented lynchings has one of these memorials in the equal just not the in the memorial garden. And our county has five documented lynchings. We think there might be our records, our team has done some research and we think there's probably one or two more that did not make this list. And so this museum has two of these. They have one for the museum and one that they hope and we hope will be in Weekly County or in those counties. So the idea is to create memorials for these victims in each county. And this is where our project comes in. So 
our group, we had several group members take a trip to Montgomery, Alabama in July 2018. And luckily they did that trip then because of COVID. We wanted to do a trip last summer, but we couldn't. So a group took a trip to Alabama in 2018. And when they came back from this memorial, they decided to get to ask around in our community to see if there's any interest first, because it takes a lot of work to even get this to, to get the conversation started. So they we asked some people if we can even have the conversation about our history, about our past. And as I said, the past is difficult to to read about and it's difficult to accept because it it's it's not it's not good and so we wanted the group wanted to bring awareness and hopefully a monument to the lynching victims in Weekly County and to bring these monuments there's a lot of we have to talk to our go county government and our city officials. And of course we need to have money to bring this monument. So there are a lot of other issues more than, hey, we want this monument. There are a lot of political and other barriers that we must get through. But um, since 2018, we've had several community meetings and we've had many events that have taken place to learn and share experience about racial just, justice here in, in our county, especially in our county, but also just in the South in general. And we've been having these meetings and events for about two years, and um, we are slowly gaining more momentum in our community. So, one of the things that we recently did was in September of 2020 is we collected soil. We have one of our group members is did a tremendous amount of research and was able to almost locate the, the area, almost the exact area where one of the victims, Mally Wilson, was lynched. And so we collected some soil. So I will show you a video about what's called the Remembrance Project. This project is a project that is about changing this narrative. The soil that you collect will not only go as part of this exhibit, it will also be used to make a memorial. Uh, we've now bought some land here in Montgomery where we hope to build a memorial to the victims of lynching. It's a confrontation because you are confronted with truth in a visual way that is undeniable. For all I know, some of the very dirt we dug was there. <laughs> I thought that digging on that soil was a poignant way to connect with the time, the event, and most importantly, the man. So this is one way organizations and communities can memorialize victims. And through our research in our county, in Weekly County, we were able to 
more or less figure out the spot where one of our victims, Mally Wilson, was lynched. So in September 4th, we had a ceremony. Because of COVID, it was just very small. And we, it's, and this was along the railroad tracks, which was a very common area because of just the transportation and so forth. So a lot of lynchings did happen near or along the railroad tracks. So we had a small collection ceremony and brother Oren said a prayer and it was uh, just a, again, just memorializing and giving time and space to these victims. So about our project, the Weekly County Reconciliation Project, um, I've been involved in the group since its conception in 2018. We have, I'll show you here, uh, we have a Facebook page and we have a lot of resources about different events and just general current events and historical events and all, all sorts of stuff. So you can also find that on on Facebook, it's public. Uh, we have our home page and Kamarjai will share these links in the chat box so that you can check these out on your own time. But this is our home page and that we have videos about if you go to uh, you can learn more about our soil collection that we did in September. Uh, we have videos, you can learn about some experiences that some of our community members have had and our background and so on. And one last thing before I open it up for questions is this month, as we've learned, as we know, it's Black History Month. And in our town, we have the University of Tennessee at Martin, and they have a civil rights conference, which we're lucky this year because it's virtual. So that means you can attend and it's all month. It is the only civil rights conference specifically to civil rights here in the US. Um, we're very excited for this. Uh, we've already had two events, but um, a lot of these events, these are keynote speakers. And for some of you, it's early morning. So it could be at, these are all probably 7 a.m. for you. So if you're up early in the morning, I recommend you can watch these. You can sign up for them or you can watch them on the University of Tennessee at Martin's Facebook. They have a Facebook Live. And that will also be posted in the links. So going back to my presentation. So here are the links that will be posted in the chat box for you. Okay, so that is enough about me and my presentation. It's exactly 25 minutes. Perfect for me. Uh, do you have questions? What kind of questions do you have or comments or anything? So uh, while the, the participating is um, invited the questions, I have a question for you, Caroline. Mm -hmm. uh, could you please tell me, uh, are there any other lynching um, monuments in the USA except Tennessee or Florida? Monuments? Yeah. Um, that's an excellent question, Kamarjai. Um, I do not, so this movement of getting lynching mo monuments and memorials is relatively new. Um, I know the county near us, near Jackson, Madison County installed one uh, in the spring of 2020. That's the one I know personally, of course, there's, they're becoming, as communities are getting more organized, more communities are 
installing them in their communities. I don't know the number, but the monument is relatively recent. And this is why the organization wants community members to do it because there are not many monuments for the lynching victims. And this is the point is we need to, we need to have them. So, okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I could add a comment that I think that we can call the people uh, who provide this idea to, uh, to make a monument of it, like a heroes, because it's a historical um, historical size that we need, like uh, all over the world, need to mm -hmm. remember because uh, it was. Be also, I have another question for you. Mm -hmm. Like, um, uh, thank you for answering the, answer, the latest question. So uh, who provided the idea of the lynching monument? Uh, you said that it's new and uh, when it come from, maybe in the other countries or something uh, else. So, that's a, so the organization, the Equal Justice Initiative, which is the link, um, let's share my screen again. Uh, the organization in Alabama. Oh no. So the Equal Justice Initiative is, they're the ones that have the memorial. And they're sort of organizing the ones that have the two memorials. So the one that's in the museum that I showed and the memorial, and then they made a second copy. Uh, so this one, so this one is permanent in Alabama at that memorial, but they made two copies. So hopefully every county in the US will eventually have one. So we're working to get our second one here in Weekly County. And this museum opened in 2018. So it's still very modern and recent. Good, very good question. Next. And uh, we have a comment actually in the chat box, and so I'm going to read. Um, Tatiana uh, wrote, a great project, Caroline. Uh, we don't think that lots of names of uh, terror lynching left in docs. So how uh, do you get the names of those victims? That is the very difficult part. Um, this organization, the Equal Justice Initiative, has a record that's a good place to start. As I said, they have about 4,000 or more documented lynchings. However, there are many that they don't have records of. And we are lucky enough in our organization to have some people that really like doing research. So they have looked through old newspapers. They went to the library and looked through old copies of newspapers to get documentation. And um, so it, it takes a lot of work. It's and it takes a lot of time. I'll show you. Um, so uh, I think we need to say thank you for that people who are doing researches. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. I, I'm going to show this PowerPoint. Uh, I think one of our members, I think one of the members that did all the research, I saw her pop up earlier. But um, for example, this, let's see if it shows up. So is, um, you know, finding these old, articles. So this article is lo it was found by one of our members, Mike Rea. Um, 
and these are all old newspaper articles. So it takes a little, a lot of passion and a lot of it, just general inquis you know, people are curious. It takes a lot of curiosity and passion to find these articles. But luckily we have the internet and once they're found, now we have, at least for us in Weekly County, we have it in one space now. So it's available online. So it's a lot easier now than it was even 10 years ago. But some people really enjoy doing this. And you can find uh, the records for Weekly County on our website under background. Okay, good. Next yeah. question. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question from Baruch. Uh, the question is, how many people are involved in this project? Um, so again, this is Weekly County. And so we're compared to the rest of the US, very, very, very small. Um, I would say, it's hard to say, we've had 60 people at one meeting. I think 60 to 100 people are aware and active in a way with our organization. We have some, of course, we have very active people, but it's hard right now with COVID. People are, you know, but I'd say. Okay, and the question for me, uh, does the government uh, support the um, construction of monuments or do only the local people make them with their own money or? Um, also an excellent question and um, it's complicated. I will answer it in that way. So how it works is we have our group meetings and this is just the community people. However, for us to get this monument, this, um, that square, this one, if we want this in our county, it has to be in a public space. And in order for that to be in a public space, it needs to be approved by our local government, either our city or county government. And so that's where it gets more difficult. And of course, we have to have money to pay for that. So through donations from the community members, but getting it passed by the government is the challenging part. And it Every county and city is different in the US as to their support for this. So some counties and cities, not a problem. For some areas, it is an issue. Okay, thank you. So we have a question from uh, Dilnas. Were people later punished for illegally punishing African-Americans? Um, were they punished as I'm going to say no I don't think so if no they were not I, I not that I know of if no okay so um the question from Kirill how long have you been doing the project uh we started this our community conversations we've been doing about two years. Mm. It's such a long time. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the point of this work. It takes a long time. It's it's not it's not gonna stop. That's one number one. It will not stop. And it's 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 a long process. The history, it just takes a long time for people to it's a sensitive topic. So for some people, it, it takes more time to, to process and understand and just get it. Um, okay, the next question, I just kind of remade it, remake it. Whose idea was to run that project in your county? 
Um, I don't think it was one person's idea. I think it is a group of people that have, I have personally not been to this museum, but as I said in the beginning, the summer when it opened, about a dozen people went down to the memorial in Alabama and we got talking and other people have visited and read about it. So it's not one person, there's, there's a core group of about 20 people that um, are very much driving this, this idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so there is a big question from Amonjol. As far as I know, most of the most of the lynching was happening in the conservative and religious red states, and the source of this hatred and racism was because of the ignorance of people, which was caused by religion. So what do you think of it? Can you assume that the religious conservative people from the red states were the main force of the segregation and lynching? I think it's a very difficult question. That is a difficult question. Um... First of all, I I would take I would step away from the religion component um, at at the just thinking of the history. Blacks were enslaved until 1865, and then they were freed from slavery. So it's it has nothing to do with religion, although I feel like that's another topic. It's the white people, if you look at the history, white people owned the blacks, so they felt superior. And that just kind of just went throughout time, aside from the religion, it had nothing to do with religion. And so that's, um, just to summarize, so even though the 1865, not it was not that long ago, so generation and decade and decade and still those ideas are passed a lot between generations. Okay, next question. Did we lose Kamarjai? And I have some of my friends, Miss Joyce. Do you have any comments? Miss Susie? Okay, sorry. Um, we lost Kamarjai. I will read the questions. Okay, so one of the questions is, I have a question, is it true that white people just took black people from their native lands for exploitation? Okay, this question, that is true, right? So uh, white people went to the continent of Africa, to West Africa, to various countries in, um, took them and yes, uh, that is true. And they took them all over to the, not just the US, but to the Americas, North America, South America, to the islands. Okay, I have another question. Then why it was and still happening mostly in the red states. What is the reason for that? So this is a very current question. Why is it still happening? What's the reason? That's a difficult question. Um, do I know the reason? No. Why is it still happening? If you look at the history, 
1865. It wasn't that long ago. Like our grandparents, your grandparents, it just wasn't that long ago. So it takes time for change to happen. And I know I want change to happen now, but it takes time to change, pe change people's ideas and beliefs. And things get passed from one generation to the next. So it's very difficult to, to, do, to make change when these ideas are so embedded and entrenched to people's thinking. Okay, so the next question is, um, why was the monument to Andrew Jackson attacked by in 2020 by black people? This is a whole nother conversation about Confederate monuments in 2020 and racial tensions in 2020. Um, To put this loosely and lightly, um, Jackson was a slave, a slave owner, and uh, still part of the. He is. He has monuments all over, and still showing signs that he is quote. So it's oppressive. He's oppressing. So it's it's very complicated. So I'm going to bypass that question because the whole another conversation about monuments is uh it's another conversation but it just it's the history it's we're still idolizing the andrew jackson was still being thought of as a good person and his actions show him that he's not a good person Okay, um, next question. Okay, what do you think we should do to be united as a whole humanity? Um, that's an excellent question. I think to be united, we need to read, we need to educate, we need to understand history, read their history, and not just, of course, I'm in the US, we can read American history, but read about history all over the world to get a better understanding. And I, and um, just being honest, I think that's a way to unity is just education and reading. Having conversations like this is huge as well. Okay. Um, Another great question. Can you, can you comment on the events with Jacob Blake? Oh man, summer 2020 is, it's, it's been a tough few years, uh, summer 2020 with the Jacob Blake and George Floyd and all of those, these just heinous crimes and just a lot, just terrible deaths. I don't know if I have any comments other than racial violence and policing it still is an issue in 2020 and 2021. It's, you know, we, I told you the history of these events that happened not that long ago. Same, same thing, different name happening in 2021. Okay, uh, another comment was, um, she said, whether all topics will be related to history, I find very interesting and informative. And another person said, I think that people should refer to history in order not to repeat mistakes. And I completely agree. And I think that's the best thing is, you know, so having these conversations and, Educating, asking people questions, asking, you know, your people older than you, asking them questions and asking people's lived experiences. That's the best way we can learn. 
Um, I'm not sure if I've missed questions. Okay. Any other questions? Kamar Jai is back. Oh. Okay. Hi, Kamar Jai. Hi. I'm here. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it yeah. happens. I saw many uh, grateful comments in the chat box. So I absolutely agree with them. Thank you for the presentation. It was very informative. I learned a lot. I hope uh, that uh, all of our participants today also learned a lot about the uh, special history of the United States. Thank you so much, Caroline. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And thank you. I know this is uh, um, a difficult topic for English, of course, but also just, just sensitive. So um, thank you for staying here. Oh, okay. Um, there is also one more question mm -hmm. um, from Amanjol. What do you think, uh, what is the biggest obstacle right now that holds us back from the unity? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think right now, one of our biggest obstacles is staying in the US, what we call staying in our silo is um, especially right now with COVID, we're not interacting with people as much as we did. And so we're consuming news and information that feeds that we want to read. It may not necessarily be accurate or true or factual, but it's what people want to read. And I think that's our biggest issue right now is having literate media literacy is the big word. So knowing where your news comes from, knowing your resources and having tough conversations. I think that's our biggest challenge is that right now. Yeah, absolutely agree. <laughs> So um, I think um, there is, I saw one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the question from Inna, um, she also wrote, thank you so much for your excellent presentation, Caroline. And she has a question why do people fighting? How do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, 2021, uh, the idealist in me would think we are better than this. And, but um, why are people still, I ask my question, I ask myself this every day, but um, the truth is, and the reality is the history the the ideas get passed from generation to generation and how do how do, how do we stop and change these ideas and present the truth present the facts that's that's my just my input <laughs> so okay so now I'll uh, read the last question for mm -hmm. the meeting. So, okay, dear participants, we have a poll that you can fill. Uh, it's about where are you from, where you get information about this event and etc. cetera. Please um, fill it up. And so the next, the last uh, question is, um, so, um, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for this presentation uh, from mm -hmm. Amina. And uh, what about white people? Are they uh, racist by black people? I think it's the most. I understand. I understand what the person is trying to say. Um, mm -hmm. The answer is no. I White people, it's have always the historical sense. It's Blacks, Mexicans, Native Americans have been oppressed by white people. 
in the history of the US. And um, this argument of what I think this person is trying to revert for to is called, quote, reverse racism just does not exist because the white people, it's the majority. And in order for this to, in order for the US to move beyond this quote, reverse racism, which does not exist, white people have to learn their own history as to why we have these, as to why black people, Native Americans have been oppressed. Why, why do they feel this way? Well, there are many reasons as we discussed. So to answer her questions, is there reverse racism? The answer is absolutely not because the system has been built for by white people for white people. So there is there is no reverse racism. Okay, thank you. So I think that, yeah, there is also the comment. Uh, thanks a lot. There is another meeting for us. It was a good talk and good information. Uh, so, okay. Uh, now I think that we could and our meeting. Thank you for all of us who participated. Also, Caroline, thank you for your time. And now let's make a photo for the memory. I yes. ask all of you, all participants, please, who, who didn't uh, turn on their cameras, please did it. Now we are going to do a photo. Hey, guys. Also, also we like a smile. You could smile during we are making in the photo. Okay, thank you. One more. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's make a photo. Uh, by one, two, three. Okay, smile. Great. And wait, I'm going to save it. Okay, and one more, I guess. There is many another people <laughs> who turned their camera on. And one, two, and three. Great. Thank you so and much. Don't forget, I some of you seem to be interested. Um, the UT Martin, University of Tennessee at Martin has a wonderful civil rights conference happening this month and it's virtual. So you can explore some of these topics that some of you are asking about. Um, you can look at the lots of resources that um, Comrade Jai, can you paste those again? But um, We'll put those in the chat box. But thank, thank you. you for participating. And um, some of our friends from Weekly County, I um, thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, guys. You also could join and follow us in the Facebook and Instagram pages. Now I'll send it to the chat box. American Corner Costa and I join us and stay healthy. Thank you for all of us for participating. I think it will be very information and very uh, great presentation for today, Thursday evening. So, okay, good evening for everyone. Thanks a lot. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye-bye.